so the first problem we're going to look at says that I have the ordered pair in polar form 5 pi over 3, and it wants you to find three additional points between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. It doesn't give you any restriction on the radius. So let's just draw where this is first. Pi over 3 is right here, and it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth ring right there. That's where that spot is. So instead of going up this way, I could go down and around that way. That would be called negative 5 pi over 3, and I would want to keep my radius 5 positive. So I would go this way, and then out to the fifth ring. I could go this way to its friend that's down here in the third quadrant. This distance would be negative 2 pi over 3, but then I would need the radius to be negative, because instead of going this way, I want to go back that way, so it would be a negative 5. And using my same blue line, instead of going down to that value, I could go around this way to that value. That angle would be called 4 pi over 3. And still, I'd be on the wrong line. I'd want to go back the other way, so it would be called negative 5. So there is three additional representations in between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Our next problem says that I have um, two different parts. Part A says I have the ordered pair negative 8 comma 7 pi over 6, which is in polar form, and it wants me to find the rectangular form. So this is my r and my theta. So remember that I have r cosine theta equals x, r sine theta equals y, so I'll do negative 8 cosine of 7 pi over 6, comma, negative 8 sine of 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6, that ordered pair, it's down here. And it's going to be negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. So it's going to be negative 8 times negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 8 times negative half. So if I do negative 8 divided by 2, it's going to be a negative 4. And then a negative times a negative makes a positive. So this is going to be 4 root 3, comma, 4. There's my rectangular form. For letter B, they give me 3, comma, 102 degrees. This one requires a calculator. You're going to do 3 cosine 102 degrees, comma, 3 sine 102 degrees. And letter A, I didn't use a calculator because 7 pi over 6 is on the unit circle, and so I knew what the exact ordered pair was. But this one is not on the unit circle, so you're going to have to grab a calculator. You're going to have to make sure that you're in degrees because otherwise it's not going to work. And we always run around to three decimal places unless told otherwise. So this one is negative 0.624, comma. Two point nine three four. So here's my answer. I had to use a calculator on that one because it was on the unit circle. The next problem is the other way around. They gave me the xy ordered pair and they want me to find the trigonometric polar version. So I have 4, comma, negative 4 root 3. When I'm going from xy's to polar, I always have to name the quadrant so that I don't mess up. Quadrant 4. So I remember r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r squared is going to equal 4 squared plus negative root 3 
squared. Sorry, negative 4 root 3 squared. So r squared is going to equal 16 plus 16 times 3. So r squared is going to equal 16 times 3 is 48. 6 plus 8 is going to be a 4. You carry the 1, so you get 64. And then when you square both sides, r equals 8. Then to do the theta arctangent of the y over the x, so negative 4 root 3 over 4 equals theta. These 4s are going to cancel off, so you really have arctangent of negative root 3 equals theta. You can use your hand trick. Remember, you put your left hand in front of you. And then you're going to flip it upside down so your thumb is facing down. And you would put down your index finger because that would give you three fingers on top. So you could square to three. And then the index finger is the fraction bar over the square to one. So that is going to be pi over three. But I need to be in the fourth quadrant. So the f angle in the fourth quadrant that's the over three team is five pi over three. So my answer is eight comma 5 pi over 3. Letter B says I have negative 7, oops, negative 7 root 2 over 2, comma, 7 root 2 over 2. This is going to be in quadrant 2, because x is negative and y is positive. R squared is going to equal negative 7 root 2 over 2 squared plus 7 root 2 over 2 squared. R squared is going to equal, I'm going to get 49 times 2 over 4 plus 49 times 2 over 4 r squared is going to equal, these are going to reduce to a 1 and a 2, these two reduce to a 1 and a 2, so I'm going to get 49 over 2 plus 49 over 2, so I get r squared equals 98 over 2, which that does um, go into there evenly, 49, so r, e oops, r equals 7, because you square root it. And then I'm going to do arctangent of y over x plus theta. And I'm going to go over here and do some fraction work. I have 7 root 2 over 2. And then you keep change flips, so times... 2 over negative 7 root 2. Root 2 cancels out with this. 2 cancels out with this. 7 divided by second is negative 1. So what I really have is arctan of negative 1 equals theta. So again, put your hand in front of you and do your hand trick. And you can put your middle finger down to get root 2 over root 2, which is 1. Or you can know that tangent is equal to 1 in all the 45s. But remember up here we said it was in quadrant 2. So the 45 degree or pi over 4 thing in quadrant 2 is 3 pi over 4. So my answer is 7 comma 3 pi over 4. Number four wants us to convert polar equations to rectangular and then identify the shape. So letter A. I have R equals 3 secant theta. So R equals 3 times 1 over cosine theta. I multiply the cosine over. R cosine theta equals 3. R cosine theta is x, so x equals 3. And the shape of this is that it is a line. Letter B has 
negative 5 over, sorry, r equals negative 5 over 3 plus 2 sine theta. I'm going to multiply that over, so I'm going to have r times 3 plus 2 sine theta equals negative 5. So we get 3r plus 2r sine theta equals negative 5. 3r plus 2y equals negative 5. I'm going to move the negative or the 2y over and make it negative. I'm going to put the good guys together because r is who I still need to deal with. So then I have negative 5 minus 2y. And I'm going to square both sides. So the 3r becomes a 9r squared. This right here, you have to literally FOIA out negative 5y minus, sorry, negative 5 minus 2y times negative 5 minus 2y. So we're going to get 25 um, plus 10y plus 10y plus 4y squared. So this is going to equal 25 plus 20y plus 4y squared. R is really x squared plus y squared. So this is really going to be 9x squared plus 9y squared equals 25 plus 20y plus 4y squared. And now what I can do is move everything to one side. And so if I did that, I'm going to get 9x squared minus 5, oh no, sorry, plus 5y squared minus 20 y minus 25 equals 0. And using our rules from the conic section, this and this are not the same, but there's a plus sign. So we can see that this is an ellipse. So here's my rectangular form in general. I could complete the square and put it in standard, and the shape is an ellipse. That was for A. Oops. For B. And then for C. I have R cosine theta equals 4. R cosine theta is X equals 4. This one is also A line. So here's my rectangular, and there's my shape. And then finally, the letter D. R equals 4 um, sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. I can't change anything yet because I need the sine and cosine to have an R. So I'm going to multiply everything, both sides of the equation, by an R. That gets me an R squared equals 4R sine theta plus 2r cosine theta. r squared is x squared plus y squared. And then it equals 4. r sine theta is called y two plus 2r cosine theta is called x. I'll go this way. So I'm moving to one side. I get x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 4y equals zero. This is your rectangular form, general rectangular. And because the stretch of a one right here and a one right here match, this is a circle. So let's borrow this x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 4y. And let's, just for practice, let's convert that to parametric form. So make everything a little bit smaller. Let's take this one right here. We're going to just pr practice going to parametric form, even though the directions didn't say to. So I have x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 4y equals 0. And I want to go to parametric form, which means I'm going to have to complete the square. So x squared minus 2x plus blank 
plus y squared minus 4y plus blank equals 0 plus blank plus blank. The x blank is going to be negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. Squared is 1. And 1. The y stuff, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4 and 4. Now my x stuff factors into x minus 1 squared plus my y stuff factors into y minus 2 squared equals 5. So x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. I'm going to divide them both by 5 so that I can make this equal 1. Then I'm going to use that Pythag cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. I'm going to equate these two together. So x minus 1 squared over 5 equals cosine squared theta. Square root both sides, so you're going to x minus 1 over square root of 5 equals cosine theta. And then I'm going to multiply the root 5 over and add the 1. So x is going to equal root 5 cosine theta plus 1. There's one parametric equation. Then I'm going to do the same thing right here for the y stuff and the sine. So I'm going to get y minus 2 squared over 5 equals sine squared theta. Square root both sides, and you get y minus 2 over root 5 equals sine theta. So y will equal square root of 5 sine theta plus 2. So if we were circle ellipse, remember we use the circle or ellipse. We use cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 to go from rectangular standard to parametric. And if we have a hyperbola, it's secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta equals 1. Whatever came first, the x to the y gets the secant, and the other one gets the tangent. Okay, back to the review. Let's move on to number 5. Number 5a says that I have 5, nope, sorry, 4x minus 3y equals 5. So x is r cosine theta, so 4r cosine theta minus 3y is r sine theta equals 5. Both of the things on the left-hand side have an r in common, so r, 4 cosine theta, <coughs> minus 3 sine theta equals 5. And now I can divide over and get the r by itself. So r equals 5 over 4 cosine theta minus 3 sine theta. And that is my answer. Letter B says x equals 5. x is r cosine theta equals 5 r equals 5 over cosine theta. And when cosine's in the bottom, it's called secant, so 5 secant theta. So my next problem says that it wants me to thoroughly describe what this graph would look like, five characteristics. So one, it's a rose. It has um, this right here is B. Since B is even, B times 2 is the number of petals. If it's odd, it's just the number. So if it were a 3 theta, it'd just be 3. But I have 4 petals. And the number in the front tells you the length of the petals. So the petals are 4 units long. And if we were to actually sketch a graph of this, 
we can make a little table and we can plug things in. So if I were to plug in um, thetas and r, so if I plug in zero, zero times two is zero, zero, um, cosine of zero is one, one times four is four. So I know on this axis, I'm gonna be out four units, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have a pedal right here. That means I'm gonna have a pedal here and here and here. So it has x axis symmetry and y axis symmetry. So there's four characteristics and I even sketched a graph by using a table and things that I knew. So all of this is skills that you should be able to do. The next problem has some graphs. It says write the equation. I'm actually gonna practice writing the name also. So number one is an offset circle, which we call an indented loop. The short side is too long and the long side is four long. And so I'm gonna write R equals, it's gonna be a plus sign in the middle, it's gonna be a cosine. The long side um, should be a, sorry, the short side should be a minus b, the long side should be a plus b. So you can write a system of equations. a minus b equals two, a plus b equals four. So if you add these equations up, you get two a equals six, so a equals three. So if a is three and I plug it back in, three minus something is two, it's one. So here's my equation for number, or sorry, for letter A. B is called an inner loop. This is length one. The whole thing is five. It's gonna be R equals, it's gonna be a negative, a negative axis on that X axis, so it's cosine theta. In this one, b minus a equals one. The bigger one goes with the trig function because the bigger one makes the loop-de-loop -loop happen and it needs to be next to the trig function. And then b plus a is gonna equal five. So same idea, add the equations up. Two b equals six, b equals three. Three minus what is one, it's two. So there's my answer. Letter C is a circle. If I had like this circle centered perfectly at the origin, we used to R equals any number, in this case, ring two or two. But I don't have that. I have a circle that's centered on an axis. And because of that, I know it's gonna need a trig function. So R, oops. R Sorry, trying to do consistent colors. R equals, it's going to be a sine, theta. That number in front of the diameter, so my diameter is 1, 2, 3, 4. And because I'm on a negative axis, I want to make it negative out front. This one has, this first one, this one's called a flower, which we call rose. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 petals. So R equals 4 theta. And each petal is one, two, three long. And so now I need to figure out what trig function it is. So for me, the easiest way to, is to guess and then check it. So if I guess that it's a cosine, um, and I plug in zero here. If I plug in zero, I get cosine of zero, which is one. One times three is three. That means at zero, I should be out on ring three like that. I should be out here, but I'm not. So it's not going to be a cosine equation. It's going to be a sine equation. And there's your final answer. Okay, so for number eight, we're in a graph. Oh, 
letter A says R equals 2 minus 5 cosine theta. So this one is an inner loop. There's a minus in between, so it's going to be on the negative axis. And because it's got a cosine, it's going to be on the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The inner loop is going to go to 2. No, sorry, to 3. Because the difference between 5 and 2 is 3. And the big loop should go all the way to 7. Something like that. B says R equals 5 sine 3 theta. So it's a rose. They have lengths of 5. And there's three of them. So if it were me trying to figure out where this was going to fall, because I know it's going to be a pedal on a y-axis somewhere, let's plug in a theta and see what we get out for r. So let's plug in pi over 2. When I plug in pi over 2, I multiply by 3 and get 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is um, negative 1, and then negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So I go to the pi over 2 axis, but then I go backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that means I know I have a pedal right here. And these roses split up the space evenly, so if I have one pedal on an axis, the other two are going to split what's left in the first two quadrants like that. Letter C says r equals 4 sine theta. This is a circle. It's going to be on a y-axis, positive y-axis, because of the sine. And that 4 up front is my diameter. So I should be something like that. It's a circle. Letter D and E are a little bit trickier. We can still do them. So for letter D, I have R equals 2 over 1 plus sine theta. And this one you may not recognize, so let's multiply it over and get R times 1 plus sine theta equals 2. R plus R sine theta equals 2. This becomes a Y. So I have R plus Y equals 2. R equals 2 minus y, and then I'm going to square both sides. So I get r squared equals 4 minus 4y plus y squared. This is x squared plus y squared equals 4 minus 4y plus y squared. This y squared and this y squared are going to cancel off. So now I have x squared equals 4 minus 4y. Um, let's see, I can do x squared minus 4 equals negative 4y. And then I can divide everything by the negative. So I get negative 1 fourth x squared plus 1 equals y. So this is a parabola that got moved up 1 and opens down. So it's going to be super wide, kind of like this. There's a sketch of it, though. And then the last one, letter E, says I have R equals 6 over negative 4 plus 2 cosine theta. I'm going to multiply over, so I have R times negative 4 plus 2 cosine theta, negative 4r plus 2r cosine theta equals 6, negative 4r plus 2x equals 6, 
negative 4r equals 6 minus 2x. Have to foil both sides. And you get 16r squared equals 36 minus 24x plus 4x squared. So this 16 times x squared plus y squared like that. So I get 16x squared plus 16y squared equals 36 minus 24x plus 4x squared. So move everything to one side, I should get 12x squared plus 16y squared um, plus 24x equals 36. I have to complete the square here, so I'm going to pull a 12 out of the x stuff. I get x squared plus 2x plus blank plus 16y squared equals 36 plus blank. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, but on this side I added a 12. So now I have 12 times x plus 1 squared plus 16y squared equals 48. 48. Divide both sides by 48. So 12 over 48 reduces to x plus 1 squared over 4 plus 16 goes into 48 three times. So I get y squared over 3 equals 1. That's an ellipse with a center at negative 1, 0. It goes sideways 1, 2, sideways 1, 2, goes up root 3, which is like 1.7, and goes down 1.7. So there's the picture for letter E.